Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I thought I'd do a video about DIY homemade piercings. Since doing my DIY piercing videos, I've had a lot of comments from people saying, I'm gonna pierce this place at home, which is always a bit worrying because you obviously don't know if people are gonna use the right equipment or anything. And I started out with a safety pin and it was the most ridiculous thing I ever did because I pierced like my nose with a safety pin and literally today I had to take my stud out three months on because it kept getting aggravation bumps because I didn't pierce it at the right angle and the stub was sat in my nose weirdly and it kept getting infected because obviously the safety pin wasn't completely sterilized. So it just caused me problems and I don't want people to make the same mistake I did at first. I'm obviously not a professional, but the piercings I've done since then with like the proper equipment, like my tragus, my helix, my smiley piercing, have all ended up really good so I wanted to give you my tips on how to do DIY piercing. First of all I think there's quite a lot of piercings that you shouldn't do at home, things like a bridge piercing, brow piercing, rook piercing, belly button piercing, septum piercing, anything like that I don't really think should be done at home. The problem with things like brow or bridge, rook, belly button, anything like that is I feel like you don't really know how much skin to go through because unless you're a professional and you're like trained in it you're not going to know how deep to go. If you go too deep in then you're going to probably cause yourself major issues and if you don't go in deep enough then it will migrate and tear out things like a septum piercing you shouldn't do yourself as well because it's the kind of piercing that if you get it like one little bit out of place it's going to be really obvious that it isn't straight and if you go through cartilage again you're going to cause yourself issues so those type of ones i definitely wouldn't say do at home um, go get them done professionally save up whatever you need to do i know there's a lot of reasons as to why people pierce at home either they can't afford it strict parents underage to get it done professionally or just get a better buzz from doing it themselves once you've decided on the piercing that you want to do and it's a sensible decision like i don't know uh nostril piercing or lip piercing helix piercing low piercing whatever you're doing that is just kind of a piercing that is in one side and out the other and it's kind of just straight once you've made the decision on what one you want to do you're going to want to do a shit ton of research watch videos of them being professionally pierced so you're kind of seeing what angle you need to go at and just like how they're done usually search about pain because obviously you want to put your pain tolerance into consideration also search if they have any major risks because i know that some piercings carry more risks than others once you've researched it all and it is safe for you to do, then you can head over to somewhere like eBay to buy the equipment, which I know a lot of people say eBay you shouldn't trust and that it's not really like a trusted site for good equipment. I get all my stuff off there and I haven't had any problems yet. No matter what piercing you're doing, the main thing you're gonna wanna order is some needles. I think you can get a pack of five for like two pounds 50 or something off there. Obviously search which gauge you need the jewelry to be for the piercing. And then I'd usually say size up the needle a little bit. So for instance, if you're doing a helix piercing, the average size jewelry for that is 16 gauge. So buy your needles in a 15 or 14 gauge so the jewelry slips in the back of it easier and then it will go in without too much aggravation. Always size the needle up a little bit. So you're gonna want these one used sterilized needles. They should come in a packet like this and on the back it just says body piercing needle, single use. This is an 18 gauge uh, sterile by EO gas and it says the production date and everything on it. This is the only type of needle you should be buying. It should be ones that are sterilized and in a one use little packet. They should also be hollow. Also buy some gloves. Um, I just searched body or piercing gloves, I think online. And you can usually get sample ones if you don't want to spend like eight pounds on a natural box of like 100 gloves. They're the main two necessities that you need. And then if you want to kind of make it easier for yourself, then I recommend buying some of these uh, piercing tweezers or clamps. Just makes it a bit easier to get everything in place, kind of make sure it's like all flattened down. And then, I don't know, I just find it a lot easier to make it straight when it's with these. So they're the main three things you're going to want to buy offline. You're also obviously gonna wanna buy a piece of jewelry for whatever you are piercing. Don't make the mistake of piercing your helix or something and then putting a little butterfly clip in it. Butterfly clip earrings are for low piercings only and yet everyone uses them for every type of piercing. So for instance, if you were doing a helix piercing, you would want something like a labre stud. Just search what type of jewelry is usually used in that type of piercing and then search on eBay or wherever you wanna go. Make sure you're getting the right gauge of jewelry and the right length. And also make sure that the jewelry is a good metal, which you again, you can search. You can search what type of metal you need for that type of piercing, but usually it's titanium or surgical steel. So make sure it's one of those two materials so that your body doesn't get irritated by it. Coming down to the actual piercing, you're gonna wanna lay some like kitchen roll out where you're gonna do it so that you can put all your equipment on there and it's like not just being sat on a side where it's probably harboring bacteria. You're gonna wanna thoroughly wash your hands and then dry them on a paper towel. Don't dry them on a normal towel because they're usually 
again, harboring bacteria and other people will have touched them and stuff. So use a piece of kitchen roll. Once you've washed your hands and dried them, put on your gloves and then wash your hands again with the gloves on and dry them again on a paper towel. Boil some water and then just put the little stud in a cup so it can sterilize any like bacteria off. Leave it in there for probably about five minutes and then when you take it out, clean it with some rubbing alcohol as well. Clean the place you're piercing with rubbing alcohol. Mark where you want it to go and then pretty much you can just do it. Marking it is very important before you pierce to make sure you're getting it in the right place, of course. Don't just freehand. It. The aftercare for most piercings is fairly simple, but you need to be persistent with it. I definitely recommend going to a piercing shop or like a local chemist or something and getting some saline spray. This is really good for piercings and tattoos as well, I think. So get some of that and spray it on your piercing two to three times a day. Also head up to a shop and get some pure tea tree oil and some pure sea salt. And then again, two to three times a day, put some sea salt in boiling water. You're gonna want quite a lot in there. I don't know the exact measurements, but if you search it, then they'll be online. Put a few drops of tea tree oil in the water because tea tree is a natural healer and it is also really good to ward off infection. Let the water cool down for a couple of minutes and then dunk a little cotton pad in there and hold it on your piercing for about five to seven minutes. You're gonna to wanna to do that about two to three times a day alongside the saline spray. If it's an oral piercing like a smiley piercing, just make sure that when you clean your teeth, you like kind of brush over it a little bit to keep the jewelry clean. You can also do the salt water soaks with oral piercings as well. Obviously without the tea tree oil, just put some sea salt in boiling water, let it cool down and then swirl it around your mouth for a bit. And saline spray can be used on oral piercings as well so that is usually what i use honestly just make sure you're doing it safely make sure that you're not making silly decisions and put your health first always if you're doing diy piercings thank you guys very much for watching this video if you did enjoy hit the thumbs up button i hope it helped some of you and i'll see you all next time Mwah. goodbye